In this video I'll be covering a quadrature SSB transmit mix that I've been building up. So what I'm going to go through is, first I'll go through the conceptual diagram which you, uh, which you can see right here and uh, cover the role of all the components. Then I'll walk through the circuit diagram uh, for the transmit mixer and uh, we'll walk through the hardware that I've uh, pulled together. I'm not going to cover the, uh, the DSP that's going on in the ESP32. I've done that uh, earlier and I've got a link below to that. Uh, then I'll apply some test audio and we'll have a look at the output in the oscilloscope and the spectrum analyzer. And then finally we'll do the uh, so-called two-tone test which is used to test for uh, uh, SSB output linearity. Um, I won't hook up the output of the, ampl uh, uh, of the uh, SSB mixer to the amplifier in this video. Uh, I'll probably do that as a, in a follow-up video. Okay, so let's quickly walk through the uh, conceptual diagram for the mixer. So on the left-hand side here, we've got the ESP32, and its job is to control the local oscillator frequency through the uh, SI5351 uh, frequency synthesizer. It's to control the audio board, and I'm using the ES8388 that I, I did in a previous video. And it's also, uh, its role is to do uh, digital signal processing to perform 90, uh, 0 and 90 degree audio shifting for the input audio. The ES8388, um, that's the board that I covered in a previous video and I'll include a link below. And its job is to basically do uh, digital to analog conversion or analog to digital conversion of the, uh, the various audio signals. The SI5351 is the frequency synthesizer that I've used quite a bit to generate the 0 and 90 degrees RFLO. And then moving over to the right hand side here we have the TALO mixer. Um, now the TALO mixer takes the incoming I and Q audio signals together with the 0 and 90 degrees RFLO signals. It mixes those two together and produces a single sideband RF output. Now that single sideband will either be the upper or lower sideband and that depends on a, on a number of things. It depends on the orientation of these two signals, the orientation of these two signals, but how I'm controlling it is basically changing the configuration of DSP all the way back in the ESP32. After the, uh, the mixer, we basically have uh, two resulting single sideband signals, uh, which are effectively mirror images of one another. Um, now these two signals uh, get combined with this transformer right here which is operating at a 2.5 volt bias and then finally we have the single sideband signal coming out here and of course uh, for uh, you know for actual transmission you go through a uh, uh, an amplifier. An important thing to note here is there are uh, quadrature mixer configurations where uh, it's the actual output transformer which is doing the RF combining that's not the case in this one, but is the case in the, um, uh, for example, the phaser radio, which uh, I did a, uh, a build through before. Uh, and I'll include a link to that build process. Okay, so here's the uh, circuit diagram. Uh, let me zoom in a bit for the uh, Talo uh, transmit mixer. And you can see it's very similar to the, the Talo receive mix that I did in, in a previous video except everything's reversed. So you have uh, the audio signal coming in here and that audio signal is always already processed into an I and a Q audio signal. It then passes through this op amp network here and this op amp network's job is to basically for the Q signal and for the I signal to produce a, um, a zero and a 180 degree version of those signals. So for the Q signal here, we've got 90 and 270. And for the I signal, we've got 0 and 180. So let's just zoom in a little bit uh, to the circuit there. Uh, and as you can see, once I have those 0, 90, 180 and 270 signals, I'm inputting them into the FST3253. And this is the mixer here. So on pins 2 and 14, I get the LO signal coming in here at 0 and 90 degrees. 
And then on pins seven and nine, I've actually got the single sideband coming out here. So this is the difference between this, for example, and the phaser, is that pin seven actually already has the uh, single sideband uh, signal, and pin nine is a mirror image of that signal. And then moving up, we have uh, finally this uh, RF combiner here, which is configured for a 2.5 volt or mid-rail bias, and that basically subtracts 7 from 9 and produces the output here. Now all the circuitry off to the right hand side here uh, isn't, uh, isn't done yet so what we'll be seeing on the board is just this portion of the circuitry right here. So here's the uh, setup here so just to start with I'm using uh, my signal generator here as an audio source and it's currently set for a one kilohertz tone and that's just mono so there's no phase shifted or any, anything coming out of the uh, signal generator. So that mono signal comes all the way through here and gets uh, ingested into the ES8388 uh, board here through this line here. That then gets sent to the ESP32 for DSP processing and then finally the output phase shifted uh, I and Q audio signals come out here. Now those signals then pass through into the mixer board which is right here and let me uh, sort of zoom into that so you can get a better look at what's going on there. Okay so here's the uh, mixer board here, the audio signal coming in through here. So uh, this is the I and the Q lines right here and you can see there's that pair of op amps, a pair of op amp ICs which gives me the uh, the four op amps that I use to create the 0, 90, 180 and 270 signals. So here's the, so the classic Talo mixer uh, uh, capacitor network here and then here's the FST 3253 which actually does the mixing. And you can see there, I mean this is a bit of a hack here so just ignore all the stuff up here, I was doing a bit of playing around but basically the output of this on pins 7 and 9 comes to these two lines here and just panning down here is the RF combiner itself so here's the input from pin 7 and 9 this is a trifilla wound uh, T5043 and it is biased uh, at the midpoint uh, with this uh, resistor divider network here and then just moving down you can see the output comes out right here at this uh, this BNC connection here and I've got it currently going off to my oscilloscope. So let's have a look at the signal on the oscilloscope and see what we can see. Okay so here's the output uh, on the uh, oscilloscope and uh, because this is a single sideband what we should see with a single tone output is effectively a CW signal at the uh, LO frequency plus or minus the tone. So you can see that's what we've effectively got here. Uh, I, I have this, the LO is set to 14.1 megahertz. I've got a one kilohertz tone coming in and you can see that the oscilloscopes detected the actual frequency at 14.101 megahertz which is exactly the uh, LO frequency plus that tone. So let's just uh, let's just stop the uh, the trace for a moment and, and drill into it because you can see there's definitely some mixing artifacts going on there so I've drilled into the uh, to the single little, little bit more and you can see these mixing artifacts here so this sine wave here is exactly at the frequency of the input tone uh, so you can see there's it's creating a ripple in the output now we'll see when we go over to the spectrum analyzer kind of uh, uh, you know what's uh, what? What are some of the underlying signals that are causing that? But uh, it's obviously you can see from here it's not a pure CW tone. So let's now uh, what I'll do is I'll recompile the um, the processor to sh to change the phase shift between that is generated from the I and the Q audio signals, and we should get the lower side then. So let me just uh, compile that onto the board. Bear with me. I'll pile a noise while it's starting up again. And now you can see that signal again, but notice the, uh, 
the frequency there. So it's now detecting 14.0990, which is exactly the LO signal, 14.1 megahertz minus the uh, uh, the audio uh, the audio tone, which is at one kilohertz. So let's check that signal out now on the spectrum analyzer. So I'll move over to the spectrum analyzer and we'll have a look at the uh, lower and upper side bands. Okay, so here, here we are now on the uh, spectrum analyzer and just walking through the signals here. So this is the lower sideband signal here. This is the uh, suppressed carrier, so you can see it's not completely suppressed. And then here is the very much suppressed uh, upper sideband uh, for that uh, for that one kilohertz tone. Now, now these, uh, you know, the the generated uh, signal isn't isn't exact, but you can see this is 14.099 megahertz, which is exactly 14.1 uh, less a kilohertz. So let's see how much suppression is actually there. So the primary single sideband signals at minus 16 dBm's, and then if we go down to the uh, carrier you can see that's 46 dBm. So we've got 30 dBs of suppression between the, uh, the single sideband signal and the carrier. And then moving over to the upper sideband signal, you can see that between here and here, we've got around about 54 dBs of suppression between the lower sideband signal and the upper sideband signal. So let's do the same thing. Uh, I'll change the code, recompile it, and we'll see the um, we'll see the results. Okay, so let me just change the code again to uh, to basically swap the phase of the uh, of the I and the Q signals. Just running that now, and it'll take a little while for it to start up. There we go, it started up, and now you can see the exact mirror image that we have there. So now this is the upper sideband signal, the suppressed carrier, and the suppressed lower sideband signal. So one of the other interesting things that you can see is we've got something going on here. So this is a harmonic of this upper sideband signal, and this is exactly two kilohertz away from the, uh, away from the carrier. So there's quite a bit actually going on in the signal itself. So what I'm going to do now is uh, do the uh, classic uh, two-tone test, which is used to uh, gauge the linearity of an SSB output. And uh, the, the gist of the two-tone test is you take two uh, non-harmonically related uh, audio signals. Uh, the, the usual two picked are uh, 700 hertz and 1900 hertz. You inject them into your SSB mixer, and the output uh, has a special look that uh, that, we'll, that we'll that we'll see. Uh, it's bas basically a sort of a dual sinusoid, but but we'll get to that. So just on the uh, audio signal uh, audio signal generator setup we've got here. So I've I've still got the one output here, but I'm using the um, output wave combine function to basically mix channels one and two together and to send them to channel two. So that's basically that set up. So just going back, channel one is 1900 hertz, channel two is 700 hertz, and let's go over on the oscilloscope and see what the output looks like. So I stopped the output uh, here so we can get a better look at that. And we can see that even though we have some, some of these sort of mixing artifacts here, we've got what is expected in the output of the two-tone setup, which is to say you've got a clear, cross, clearly defined crossing point here, and there's no flat topping or other sort of distortion on the, uh, on the upper end of the, of the sine wave. So you can see here's that dual sine wave here and then this crossing point is well defined. So that's for uh, 700 hertz and 1900. So let's change it up a bit. Let's do, uh, let's say seven, uh, let's do uh, 1800 hertz and 1900 hertz. And you can see here, I mean, this is a lot better structure uh, in the output here. So I'm interested if, if anyone knows how to uh, suppress those mixing artifacts. I'd love to hear about it. But uh, 
as you can see here this is a, a beautiful uh, two-tone um, uh, a beautiful two-tone picture here so what we'll do now is let's take that uh, sort of two-tone signal go over to the signal analyzer and we'll see what's going on in the uh, in the uh, frequency domain okay so here we are in the frequency domain here and just to walk you through the peaks here so this is that 700 Hertz tone so you can see it's at 14.100 and about 700 Hertz this one over here just moving to the right is the 1900 Hertz tone so you can see 14.101 almost one <laughs> nine close enough um, and then moving over to the left here is the suppressed carrier and then these two are the suppressed um, uh, two-tone signals on the lower side downside but something else interesting going on here is all these other artifacts here so you can see and if we let's just move into one of them and see what that looks like uh, actually why don't I change the span out a little bit so we can see what else is going on there so if we have a look here let's go back to peak uh, move over to the right peak so you can see there I've got a right peak at around about uh, 25 or 2600 Hertz higher than the uh, than the, uh, the the two tones that I've got here and so this is what you're gonna get on the output is these two signals themselves are mixing together so I've got 700 plus 1900 gives me 2600 Hertz and there's a little peak there and you can see there's a whole lot of other products here so these there's these two signals in here and these will be all the integer uh, combinations of this tone plus this tone so obviously the ideal state is all you've got is this tone and this tone you don't have any of these mixing products at all in the signal but uh, nonlinearities are uh, are unavoidable really so the other thing to note is uh, there's no amplification here so this is as as good as it's going to get so in other words as you run this through amplification all these harmonic tones in the lower side brand will start to get also amplified so what I'll do in the follow-up video is I'll run this through the amplifier that I created in the previous video and we'll see the final result of what this single sideband signal looks like uh, after amplification. So I hope this was interesting. Um, obviously, what I'm what I'm heading towards is completing the ESP32 radio with a transmit side. So this is the next major portion of that, the transmit mixer. I hope you enjoyed this. I'll include links below to the two-tone test. Uh, W2AEW has, as usual, a great video on the two-tone test itself. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll include a couple other resources there uh, on this. But that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this video.